Hey gang, and welcome back for another video here on Jochem. Okay gang, in a previous video, we talked about how we could answer the question of how substituted is a particular carbon, and we could apply terminology saying that, you know, maybe a carbon, if it's not attached to any other carbons, is a methyl carbon. We could call it a primary carbon if it's attached to one additional carbon, you know, secondary, tertiary, quaternary, right? Well, if you thought that was fun, then you're in luck because what we're doing in this video is figuring out how we can do similar kind of labeling and use of terminology when discussing how substituted an alkene is. Again, this isn't going to be one of those crazy long, you know, earth shattering videos, but an important one because it's terminology that does get thrown out. And if you don't know it, it kind of hits your ear and you're like, what? I don't know what that means. We'll make sure we know what that means. So if we take a look here, ignore this, the, you know, the black structures, but look at this blue structure right here. All I've drawn is a two carbon alkene, right? An alkene is an organic structure that has at least one double bond. So in this structure, right, we have ethene, it's just a two carbon, right, ethane, but we use the E-N-E -E ending when talking about alkenes. So in ethene, I've drawn the kind of bond line version, then here's the, you know, longer structure, uh, version right there, Lewis dot kind of structure version. So what you can see is in this structure, when we talk about how substituted an alkene is, what we're asking is how many total carbons are the two carbons within the double bond attached to? I know that sounds weird and confusing, but basically when you look at both sides of the, the double bond, the two carbons involved in the double bond, and you count up the total number of carbons this carbon's attached to, and you add it to the total number of carbons that this carbon is attached to. So this thing is not substituted at all, right? This is almost like your methyl equivalent um, here, meaning that zero carbons are off of the carbons in the double bond. However, if we look at this structure right here, you can see it's basically like ethene, except there's one other carbon here. So if I look on both sides, I see there's zero carbons attached to this particular carbon here, but over here, there's a total of one carbon off of the double bond. So what I can say is this carbon right here is mono substituted. And I'm just going to abbreviate substituted by writing sub with a little period. So this is a mono substituted double bond because of the one carbon coming off of it. Now, if we look over here, you can see on both sides of the double bond, I have one carbon coming off of it here, another carbon coming off of it here. That brings us to two total carbons. So I could call this a Die substituted. I'll write this one out full double bond, right? So mono die. Now, when you have three total double uh, carbons off your double bond, you can refer to this as a tri substituted double bond. So the terminology being slightly different than the primary, secondary, tertiary. And last but not least, over here, with four total carbons off of your double bond, you can call this a tetra substituted double bond okay now that we know what the terminology is just to keep this video short i'm going to erase this i'm going to throw up a random structure with a few double bonds i just want to go through with it through the structure and label you know just be able to point out like oh that's a di substituted double bond or that's a tri substituted double bond and then i want to comment on you know these double bonds are actually have different levels of stability and we'll talk about how being substituted, more or less substituted corresponds to either being more or less stable. So give me one second, I'm gonna erase this, and we'll be back in a flash. Okay gang, we know our terminology, we know how to talk the talk, and now I want to walk the walk before we call this video a close. So in this problem, what I wanna do is kind of two things. I wanna go through, uh, I've labeled the four double bonds in this structure that we have here, and the first thing I want to do is label uh, the double bonds. And by that, I want to assign how substitute, you know, this, their substitutedness, if that makes sense. So I want to identify A, B, C, and D as being either mono, di, tri, or tetra substituted double bonds. And then two, which is kind of a newer thing that we're going to do together, is I want to uh, place the double bonds on the energy diagram 
according to relative stability. Meaning these double bonds being different levels, you know, different having different levels of substitution, they will be more or less stable as a result. So we'll go through like what is the most stable and what's the least stable. So right off the bat, for A, again, the way we're going to assign how these are substituted is we look at both carbons involved in the double bond and we see that A has one, two additional bonds to carbons off of the two in the double bond. So because that is two, A will be di substituted. If we look down at B, again, I like to put dots on each carbon just to kind of anchor my eyeballs on where to look. This dot has two bonds to carbon coming off of it. This one has two as well. That brings us to a grand total of four. So B, I'll write this in a different color. B will be tetra substituted. We play the same game with C. I see that huh, one, two, three. C will be tri substituted. And if we look over at D, this terminal carbon has no bonds to carbon, but this one right here has one. So this is mono substituted. So we got one of each type here, right? Now, that takes care of part one of this problem. Now with part two, the way, the, the rule of thumb here is the more substituted you are, the double bond, the more stable it is. A good way to remember that is that the more neighbors you are attached to, the better off you are. You're surrounded more by more people. Um, what the reason why that is, like why that is a thing, uh, you may be watching this video before you get to the free radical videos that mention this concept called hyperconjugation. But when you have more neighbors next door to the carbons in your double bond, the p orbitals in this double bond just have more neighboring orbitals to align with and it helps stabilize them. So basically, if you have more neighbors, the neighboring atoms can kind of eventually very, you know, for a brief moment, end up aligning with the orbitals right here. And you like mimic a pi bond. Again, if you're interested in that, go check out the free radical halogenation videos and the alkane series. However, the most important thing is the more, you know, the more substituted your double bond is, the more stable it is. So that is to say that tetra substituted double bonds are gonna be more stable than tri, more stable than di, more stable than mono. These are greater than symbols. So if we wanna rank them on an energy diagram, Remember, when we go up on an energy diagram, that means something has more energy, that means it's more unstable. So as you go up on an energy diagram, you have more energy, you're more unstable. So down here is our stable stuff and up here is our most unstable stuff. So the most stable double bond we have here will be B. That is our tetra substituted double bond. It has the most neighbors, it's the most stable. Then next will be our tri substituted double bond. So we'll put C right here. Then we'll have our di substituted double bond A. And then last but not least, the mono substituted double bond D. Okay, gang. Again, not the most enticing, crazy, ex interesting video uh, in organic chemistry here on JoChem. However, this terminology does come up. It's one of those things I feel like it always slips through the cracks. And I know I was shaky on the terminology for the longest time. And I certainly didn't um, have a good idea that the more substituted you are as a double bond, the more energetically stable you are. So tuck that in the back of your mind as well. If you're watching me from YouTube, hey, welcome to Joe Chem. Glad to have you here as a Joe Chemist. Feel free to like, subscribe, drop a comment. I'm glad you're here. Uh, if you're watching me from the website, joechem.io, Happy to have you there as well. If you're not on the website, I have videos, the same videos and worksheets with PDF solutions that I've created. They're 100% free. I even got videos of me doing those dang worksheets. Those are also free with study guides that I've created to boot. <sighs> Thanks for dropping by gang. Uh, cannot wait to do even more chemistry with you. Uh, and no matter what, I hope to see you all in the next video.